If you're in a place where it's appropriate for you to do so, go ahead and close your eyes. Relax your body, relax your mind, and begin to take some slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light entering your body and mind. And with every exhale, just allow gravity to take away from you all tension and anything you do not want. Continuing to breathe easily and gently as you become more and more peaceful and more and more relaxed. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, a bonfire is blazing forth and it lights us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it burns away everything that is not like itself, leaving us pure and happy, peaceful, serene. Into the sacred space, we invite the presence of our Creator. To many of us, our Creator reveals themselves to be a God and Goddess, a Mother and Father. Into this sacred space, we also invite the presence of our teachers and our angels and our guides. We ask that we be guided and led as we walk upon the way so that we can learn to become happier and more peaceful, more prosperous, more healthy, and more loving people. Thank you very much. And if it's appropriate for you to do so out loud, you can join with me and say the words, Blessed Be. While you're in that state of relaxation, I just want to take it a, a little step further. If you are capable of doing this, just keeping your eyes closed. And I want you to notice your breathing without trying to control it in any way. I want you to notice your heartbeat. And I want you to just start to notice the power behind your heartbeat. The power that's making your heart beat, that's making you breathe. Becoming more and more aware of that power that is the cause of your heart beating right now that is the cause of your breathing. Your ability to think comes from the same power. The creation of the entire universe comes from the same power. Just gently, you can open your eyes if it feels okay to do that. Even I miss misspeak sometimes. I'll say, you have the power. You have the power to do this. You have the power to do that. That's not quite true, is it? You don't have the power. Having the power implies that it can be taken from you or you could lose the power. Because if you have something, there's no guarantee that you're going to keep it. But you don't have power. You are power. You are not only one with power, you are an expression of power. So this world that we live in is hell-bent, literally, on teaching you that you're powerless. And you can just notice it only took you a second to close your eyes and get in touch with the truth that defies every lie of this world that tries to tell you that you are powerless. That power that keeps your heart beating is the same power that creates the, the sun and keeps the planet revolving around the sun. That's you. Now, you're not God. We're not saying that you are God, but we're saying that you are an expression of that, that one power. And that that one power that creates you is the same power that you are. So that you have 
all the power inherent in you that you need. And the world doesn't want you to know that. The world wants you to believe that you're dependent on this political party or this economic system, this religious leader, even in the craft, this this tradition or these tools. There's everything in the world that the ego mind has created is only there to take you away from the fact that you don't need any of it. You're not dependent on anything. None of those things can keep your heart beating. Not one of those things can keep you alive. The only thing that keeps you alive is you and your connection to the infinite. And you are a a brilliant extension of that light, and a brilliant extension of that power. And if we knew that, if we really understood that, none of these problems would make any sense anymore, and we would just drop them. We would have peace on earth in an instant. It would take over everything. The second we realized, I don't need this. I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need that. None of these things give me any power. Once, If everybody were, for just a, a, a glimpse of a moment, just a, a millisecond, able to get that, that understanding that their power doesn't come from anything outside of themselves, the whole jig would be up. Nobody would be vulnerable to these lies. The lie would be completely abolished and we would live in peace. And that's exactly what will happen. And and this isn't a prediction. It's just, it's the will of the universe. It will happen. Everybody will awaken from this dream. It will happen. But it can happen for you right now. And that's what a witch is, isn't it? Or a wizard, or a magus, or a wise person. Somebody that lives on the hedges, that lives on the edges, that lives outside of the norm, lives outside of the, of the status quo. Isn't that what we've always been doing? It's not so much that, that we have a particular practice or a particular mythology or a particular tradition or set of practices that are part of a canon, which is what the ego wants to do. The ego wants to take everything and canonize it. So that why? Because that takes the power away from us. (laughs) And we have to look to the canon to get our power. I have to go outside of the source of my heartbeat to get power to help me. How absolutely ludicrous that sounds once we just take a listen to to what we're doing. Once we really realize what we're doing. That's really what, what any of those kinds of magical people have always been and always are and will continue to be, are those people that live outside of status quo. They live outside of the confines of the ego mind. We live magically because we are constantly accessing our power. And when we constantly access our power, we have within us, just like everybody does, the ability to make change, to make change in in practical ways in our lives and also make change collectively in everybody's lives. And that's why we tend to always be on the cutting edge. We always tend to be on the cutting edge of, of what's necessary in order for us to awaken. Now, a lot of times the nightmare has to get much, much worse before it gets better. And that's what all the apocalyptic literature talks about. It's not so much predicting a thing in time, whether you're talking about the book of Revelation, whether you're talking about all those those old Greek dramas. Apocalyptic literature talks about the idea that things get worse before they get better. But in, in all those Greek tragedies, what happens at the 11th hour, 1145 even, a god shows up. And that God shows up and, and saves everybody. But it's not so much that, that something external is going to come and save us. It's that we, we have to sometimes allow the drama to play itself out. We have to allow the drama to play itself out so that we can finally say, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like this. 
let's think of something else, right? And that's the God that comes and saves us at the, at the last minute. That God is not something external to us. It's our own power of decision that we've had enough. And so witches, if, if that's even whether or not you identify as that, have always been on the cutting edge of that which is one of the reasons why witches got burned. <laughs> the ego doesn't like it when you mess with its, with its status quo, right? The ego doesn't like that one bit. <laughs> but whether you call yourself that or not, it doesn't matter. You have within you, just like everybody else does, the power to make things happen, the power to change, and the power to rise above any apparent problem. And we all do. So what I have noticed for myself is that even though I know that that's true, part of me still enjoys the drama. And it's, it's unfortunate, and it's insane, and it's sick, but part of us does. Everybody knows you get hooked. It's like, oh, watch that video. Ooh, listen to what she said. Can you believe what she said? Right? We, we like it. We like it. We don't turn it off. We turn it up. Right? Oh, can you believe what that person just did? Right? We love it. So to say, look at what they're doing, look at how horrible they are in this world, is not completely 100% genuine, is it? And until we can really honestly say we're done. We're done with this drama. We're done with this game. We're done with these problems. We don't want to do this anymore. We have to accept responsibility for taking part in it and misusing our power. Misusing our power. Because what happens is, and, and this is just magic 101, there is, a, there is unmanifest substance. That's mostly what things are, is unmanifest substance. Mostly what we have is what people would like to call negative space. And that's just pure potential. And what that is, is proto-matter, matter that's waiting for us to impress our ideas and our desires onto it so that it can manifest. And you can see um, evidence of this in a lot of, you know, ancient fairy stories and literature and, and even, you know, when directors of movies and things like that do anything with magic, there's always that little glitter and fairy dust and magic dust and smoke and all of that sort of thing. Those are all depictions of something very real, that proto-matter or that spiritual substance that is constantly about us, just awaiting for that power that we discovered at the beginning of this talk that, that lies behind our heartbeats, that lies behind our breathing, to impress upon this substance that which we desire. And that's how much power we have. But we spend more of our time thinking about the problems of this world and what we don't want and how, you know, how pained we are and all of our issues. Then we wonder why that substance gets impressed with so many negative experiences. But that's just because that's what we spend our time doing, being involved in the drama. So it's our job as leaders, because that's what, if you're listening to this, you're a leader. You're a leader of a movement that doesn't have a name. You're a leader of a spiritual movement that does not have a name, that is not confined by any religion, that is not confined by any thought system. But you're always, and people like us, us have always been on the cutting edge of these kinds of movements. And you're a leader in that movement as well. And it's up to you as a leader of that movement to start to get very bored with the drama that we see before us, to start wanting to have no more to do with it, to start withdrawing your emotion and your vision regarding the drama so that you're no longer impressing that invisible proto-matter, that invisible substance with those thoughts. And when you do that, when you do that, then what you're doing is you're aligning with something that is a much more powerful expression onto that proto-matter. Because what you're aligning with is true, is the truth. Because that, that power that we discovered at the beginning of this talk that is beating your heart, that power is you. And, and that power is connected to something greater that is connected with everybody. And that power ha- operates in a particular manner. 
and the, the problems of this world, especially what we consider to be big problems in this world, run counter to the will of that power. So if you're doing and thinking things that don't run counter to that power, then you actually are more powerful than all the people around you that are thinking, doing, or saying things that are running counter to that power. The dramas that we have within this world that can seem very real, very, very real, very nightmarish, really awful things going on in the world, those dramas, we have got to start withdrawing our interest in them. We have to start withdrawing our addiction to them. Now, I'm not saying that you're responsible personally for all of the problems in the world. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying that the the ways that those things hook you, the way that those things hook you, where you where you start to have a position on them, and you start to to get passionate about them, and you start getting involved in taking sides. It's not that that's wrong, and it's not that it doesn't sometimes have its place. But ultimately, when you start using those those motivations to inform the thinking that impresses that invisible substance, then you're part of the perpetuation of those problems. Whereas if you start to to say, wait a minute, I'm going to remove myself from having an opinion about any of these things, at least for a moment, I'm going to ask that I be informed by infinite intelligence rather than by the news or by other people or by my own um, addictive personality that's addicted to the adrenaline of some of this stuff. And I'm going to say, well, what would you rather I see? What would you rather I see? And we're speaking to infinite intelligence now. What would you rather I, I do with my mind? Where would you rather I place my, my focus? Everybody used to make fun of it when people would say, visualize world peace. Like that was just like, oh, how new age of you. But that's, see, that's, that's the ego in action right there. Why is that such a silly thing to think of? Why is it such a silly thing to say visualize world peace? What would world peace look like? What would it feel like? Is that really so bad to sit and contemplate that? Is it really so stupid to sit and contemplate, well, what would that look like? How might that, sh- how, how might that feel? How different would, would our world look like if these nations came together? And we had um, a, a, a world that was based on the fact that we're all spiritual brothers and sisters and that nothing about us, about our, our bodily differences, makes any difference to us anymore. But instead, we are seeing ourselves as co-creators of a, a mighty, wonderful, brand new world. Why would that be so wrong to spend some time thinking like that? impressing the invisible substance with those ideas. Why is that so silly, but it's so smart to think about all of the fighting and the warring and the I'm right and you're wrongness that, that permeates this world? There's your ego right there. The cynicism of your ego to say you're not cool unless you are at the front lines of having a big opinion about why they are wrong and I or we are right. Right? So even though objectively you may it may be true, you may be on the the you may be on the the winning side of an argument. You may be on the side of an argument that seems closer to the truth than the other side of the argument. That may be true, but it's up to us to take it one step further, isn't it? To say I'm going to impress invisible substance with a new thought. And that new thought is where we all come together, where we all get literally get along. We come together and we are in harmony with one another. That sounds so trite and so stupid to our ego minds. And the ego wants you to say that and think that and feel that so that you stay stuck. You stay stuck. Remember, the meek shall inherit the earth. That's right out of our spell book, (laughs) right out of our psalm book. The meek inheriting the earth means that, that it's, it's our earth. It's our earth. The more peaceful you are, the more you get to own it. So as you, as you allow yourself to, to use your mind in a new way, you have to ask yourself, what am I spending my days and nights thinking of? So let's just do that. Let's take a moment right now. 
get in tune again with that, that power behind your heartbeat, behind your breathing. It's keeping you alive right here and right now. And it'll still keep you alive even after your heart stops beating. But that because that life is eternal. Align with that power right now. You're going to claim that power. And you're going to say, what do I want to see? What do I want the world to look like? What do I want it to look like? You get to you get to have what you want in this moment. But you get to use your mind to actually heal the world. That's how powerful you are. That's how powerful we all are. You're taking time every day to access who you are as, as power and then use that power to impress on that invisible substance the world that you would rather see does much more for the world than you arguing and you being upset and you feeling victimized and you feeling small and you feeling like you have nothing uh, that you can do so you have to flail about and join with other people and talk about how wrong everybody is and how bad everybody is. Now, that, that's not to say that there isn't a place for that. Sometimes we need that, yes. Sometimes you need to take the scissors away from the baby. You need to take the, the, the gun, the loaded gun away from the child. Yes, you do. And that's what we do sometimes. And so sometimes we have to say they are wrong. They cannot do that. They must, they must stop. But that's not the end of the story. Then you have to take it one step farther. And get in into these places every day where you can where you can access y- who you are as power, and start to use your mind to impress upon invisible substance that which you would rather see, instead of this. And if you don't know what that would look like, it's easy. All you do is ask. You say, "What would it look like?" What would it look like? What does it look like? Uh, uh, Joseph Murphy used to say, ask, what does it look like in heaven? That doesn't mean, what does it look like in another place? That means from a different point of view, from the point of view of infinite intelligence, what does, this, what does truth look like, rather than from the point of view of my ego mind? So, you can take time each and every day to access who you are as power. And yes, you can use that for your personal goals. Of course you can. We talk about that all the time. But today we're talking about how you can use that to live in a new world. And we can all live in a new world. And you, yes, you can be on the cutting edge. And yes, you can visualize world peace. Yes, you can. As an active participant of the one power, you have all rights to visualize that which you desire for the world. And if your vision of the world aligns with infinite intelligence's vision of the world, it's that much more powerful than going up against that vision. And infinite intelligence wants everybody happy, everybody peaceful, everybody prosperous. Infinite intelligence wants that right now. Wants that right now, not sometime in the future. You have a huge amount of opportunity to change the world right now, today, and every single day. So let's watch what we're doing with our minds before we, we keep blaming every, everything on them and say, wait a minute, I'm not going to give them that much power. I'm going to take back who I am as power, and I'm going to use my mind accordingly, and it's going to happen. And things are going to change, and it's going to be amazing. And yeah, it may look like it's getting worse before it's better, and that, that's what all of those, that all of those uh, kinds of apocalyptic literatures talk about. But they only talk about that to keep you, to keep you motivated, because it's not going to last forever. It's not going to last forever. And there will be very soon a day when your vision starts to come to life. And in the meantime, you keep that vision clear. You keep it very clear and focused as to what you want. And that's going to speed up the time that it takes before we all experience that in this world, in three-dimensional reality. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me. I so, so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be. 